A curious case of immortality. Twilight sparkles, Erti roared, her voice echoing through the hallways of the castle. Twilight paused mid-spell, pink sparks pouring from her horn, casting the dim laboratory into a harsh light of shade and shade. With a clip sigh, she snapped. Spike, tell Rarity that I'm not seeing visitors today. Shaking her head, Twilight began to gather magic back into her horn. A hoof-sized piece of small of pink quartz before her her began to glow in symphony. Even as the shadows drew in deeper around the alicorn, the air fummed with barely constraint. Power and out Twilight's eyes turned black as she poured still more of her into the heart of. There was a mo a sudden bang at the door. To her lab flew open, bathing the ritual into a sudden light. Twilight let out an undis dignified yelp of surprise, her wings flying open, with her ear splitting boom, a lightning bolt arsed through the crystal to one of many grounded rods set up around the lab, and Twilight threw herself forward to catch the crystal before it hit the, gra the floor. Spike! She exclaimed, running a hoof over the corpse. What did I sa just say? She didn't take no for an answer. Spike protested from the doorway. A hoof step echoed through the lab behind her. Twilight! Rarity hissed, her voice like a cut glass. I would like to have a word. Twilight was always amazed by Rarity's use of equine language. She never would have thought any pony would use word as such an effective threat before she'd met Rarity. Rarity, I'm sorry, but this ha- this is going to have to wait, she said, carefully resting the crystal in the center of the arcane circles. I'm in the middle of a very delicate piece of- she turned. Oh, sweet Celestia, there's a pipe through your barrel. Rarity. Despite the feather-wide sections of copper embedded in her chest, just below her shoulder, rolled her eyes. Yes, darling, I noticed. She continued, tapping the hoof against it. It seems that despite earning their cutie marks, the Crusaders are still a hazard to everyone in a hundred foot radius. However, I was particularly concerned by the fact that the pipe has penetrated through what my passing gasp of anatomy tells me is my lung. Now, while I don't particularly relish in the thought of drowning in my own blood, I do believe it is the customary response. Do you have anything to say about the situation? Uh... Twilight eyes flicker to the circle and back again. In the distance, she could hear the rapid fire's click of claws on crystals as Spike beat a hasty retreat. No? Really, darling? Verity shot back, arching an eyebrow. Twilight swallowed. Okay, maybe. I might know a little bit about <clears throat> what's going on. Actually, it's a rather funny story. You're gonna laugh when you hear it. Rarity's glower de deepened. Twilight wilted, her ears folding flat. Or maybe you won't? The deep sigh escaped Rarity. She pressed her hoof against her brow. Twilight, does this have anything to do with that whole immortality thing you've been going on through? She looked. She took a the guilty silence as an affirmation. Darling, I sympathize, I truly do, but I would also prefer to be told that if I was going to become an unholy abomination of magic gone wrong. You're not an abomination? Twilight exclaimed. Erty cocked an eyebrow. 
at her, gesturing at the bloodless womb. Well, technically speaking, you're a lich, but... She held her hoof as Rarity opened her mouth to speak. It's just temper a temporary saying. A lich? Disdained, dripping from Rarity's voice. A withering shell of a pony who clings to life by draining the souls of the living? I'm afraid to say I, that I would rather die, she said, shuddering. Oh, no, 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 no. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Rarity levitated a book properly, dread tomes bound in what looked worryingly like leather over a, from a nearby shelf. So it's very common misconception. See, a lich just locks onto a body of it in its current state, leaving evil within withered old mages still withered. By locking you into the spell now, I can keep you in your prime youth for as long as it takes to come up with a more permanent solution. Or figure out how to turn out ponies and alicorns, whichever comes first. Rarity sighed, and the soul eating. <laughs> Twilight blushed. Well, as an alicorn, I have a lot of soul to go around. She met Rarity's skeptic gaze. Okay, so it isn't a perfect solution, but I have backup plans. A tome zipped back onto the shelf and was replaced by an equally l evil alternative. How about instead of Philactius, I put your souls into a statue, complete immunity to agings, harm, and a snazzy new look. May involve some, if not total loss of sensations in the ex extremities. Rarity sceptically looked dreadful. I really don't think that's an option, darling. Okay, okay, how about another book sword over? Ah. This one's good. I enchant a portrait to age for you. Oh, but more soul eating. Okay, well, how about, how do you feel about reincarnation? I'll need to figure out a selective breed of programming for Sweetie Belle, but... She glanced up at Rarity, who was glowing, her hoof tapping against the pipe. So, not that either. Uh, how about I... Transform you into a dragon. That way you'll have a far longer lifespan and grow to immeasurably to be immeasurably strong. Spike actually suggested that one a while back. Twilight? Or we could try something with Phoenix Fire. <laughs> Twilight continued growing panicked as she brought forth a veritable wall of books. It didn't end uh, well, for the last dozen ponies who tried it, but I'm sure we can figure something out. Twilight? Well, you know, I'm 90% sure Vinyl Scratch is a van pony. Maybe we could have her bite you. Twilight! Rarity exclaimed, finally stilling the babble of silence. Darling, she continued with another side. I understand you're... Wor so worried of us, truly I am, but do you really think that is the right solution? Sitting in a dark room, casting dark magic, just to try to start stave off the inevitable? I know, thinking about the days we won't be here hurts, and I'll miss each and every one of you. But you can't encase the world in crystal and call it saved. Twilight hung her head. I know, she said. Her voice merely croaked. Quietly, the book slipped back from the sh onto the shelves. But I never, I'd never forgive myself if Rainbow died in a stunt before I could have saved her. We always end up in dangerous situations. I had to do something. She let out a ch little chuckle. Come to think of it, I'm a little surprised you're the first pony who found out. Well, I suppose that's fair. Rarity sighed. But I would like to, you to put my soul back where you found it. I'd prefer not to know, uh, be known as the wicked sorcerer as of Ponyville. There are some gifts that should only belong to an alicorn. 
Okay. Twilight let out a sigh before reassigning the acceptance. Do you want me to remove the pipe first, or...? Yes, I want you to remove the pipe! Rarity snapped and seemed to remember her composure. If you wouldn't mind. And after that, we shall all, as a group, discuss our newfound lichdom before any pony else gets hurt. Twilight! Pinkie Pie burst into the room, her hooves beating a statokin rhythm. The mare tripped over her own hooves. A new peep pace from the door and collapsed into a pile of limbs. Her forelegs rolled free of the heap and stopped at Twilight's hooves. Pinky picked herself up. Oh, hi, Rarity! She said, teetering on three legs. Have you done anything with your hair? Um... Rarity goggled at the mare. All right, Twilight, can you stick my leg back on? She said, bounding forward. I've tried everything. Duct tape, duct tape, even gator tape. And let me tell you, Gummy was not happy with the last one. She snapped. She grabbed her legs and held it up, it back up, against her barrel, which was still festering with loose tape. Arg, this is the last time I let the twins play with the clothesline. Um, Twilight shook her head. Okay? She lowered her horn and applied a quick adhesive spell. Yay! Pinky clamped her forehoof, hooves together, rolling her new attached shoulder. Thanks, Twilight. Now, if you excuse me, I've got a gator to and a timeout to deal with. See you later. With a particular grin, Pinky turned and bounced off. Rarity stared after her for a long moment. Well, of course, Pinky would find, be fine with it. Rarity said, sighing. Still, I believe my point stands. Actually, I haven't put the spell on Pinky yet. Twilight frowned, glancing over her shoulders at the pink crystal that laid lifeless in the center of the spells. Huh? Erty looked down at the pipe, then up at Twilight. So tell me again how you fixed the soul-eating problem? 